Today, I'm going to show you exactly how much cash flow option traders can make. I'm going to do this by sharing with you how much we pocketed last month from selling put and covered call options, as well as collecting a few dividends in January. I'm also going to talk through two of my favorite option trades from last month and give you an update on our Leap option position in Disney. This will show you how you can use options to generate awesome cash flow returns every month in your account. I'm Randy Perez. I'm a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. I'm excited to show you the kind of cash flow that you can make trading options. If you've not already done so, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you get an alert every time we release a new video. The videos on this channel are all totally committed to helping you become a more profitable stock and option trader. Here you see a list of every option trade we did last month in January. The blue boxes are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. We'll discuss a naked short put option trade that we did in healthcare company Amgen, as well as a special dividend we received in one of our covered call positions in the CME group. Finally, I'll give you an update on our Disney Leap or Poor Man's Covered Call position. This is a position that has already been paid for 100% by selling covered call options against it, and it keeps getting better every month as we continue to collect cash. At the bottom, in the red box, you see that as a result of selling options, we pocketed $13,604. In the orange box, you see that the trading commissions cost us $55.88. And in the big green box at the bottom right, you see that we pocketed $649.35 in dividends, as well as the breakdown of how much dividends we receive from each one of those companies. So in all, we pocketed $14,197 from selling options and collecting some dividends. That's real cash that we can use to pay bills, to reinvest, or even to go on a vacation. It's our cash to keep. If you annualize that return, it equates to a 26.8% annualized non-leveraged cash on cash return. If you calculate the return on the $75,534 margin requirement, it equates to a 221% annualized return on margin. What are the biggest challenges you face becoming a successful option stock trader? In the comments below, please let me know what your biggest challenges are. I'm looking for ways that I can help you become a more profitable option and stock trader. The first trade I want to talk through is an Amgen, ticker symbol AMGN. As you see on the chart, Amgen provided us a very solid entry point to sell put options on January 14th. We sold the February 19th, 230 put options and received $5 per share for them. I want to mention to you a couple of reasons why we did this trade. This is the kind of information that I share with my patrons on a daily basis when we enter a trade. As you can see here where the white arrow is, if you look down just below there, you see the green and red 50 and 200 moving averages. I know that once Amgen had broke out above those moving averages, they would then serve as support. So if Amgen did come back down to around those moving averages, it should find support there. Also, notice at the bottom of the chart in the volume section, you see there had been a lot of green up volume days. This told us that there was really good buying pressure in Amgen. Well, what happened? As you see on the chart, Amgen then proceeded to climb rapidly up to 260 per share. On January 26, I began to feel this position had run pretty far, pretty fast, so I bought to close that short put option back for 95 cents per share. The timing was almost perfect, as the next day, Amgen begins to decline and went right back down to the short put strike price, which was 230 per share. Since we closed this position out early, we're actually able to take advantage of Amgen's rapid decline by selling new puts that expire on that same expiration day, February 19th, at the 235 strike price. For the new puts, we received an additional $4.65 per share. By keeping an eye on the movement of Amgen, as well as the value of the stock, coupled with the momentum of Amgen's move, we were able to double dip over the past 30 days in Amgen. In all, the initial trade paid us $4.05 per share. We are in it for 12 days. If you annualize that return, it equates to a 53.6% non-leveraged annualized cash on cash return. If you are curious about what the annualized return on margin was, it equates to just over a 517% annualized return on margin for this trade. Selling put options is my absolute favorite way to trade options. This is the perfect example of the kind of returns an option trader can make by selling put options. No, not every trade is going to be this good, but by educating yourself on how options work, you can achieve phenomenal returns and put cash into your pocket every single month. The second trade I want to share with you from last month shows the importance of keeping an eye on and making sure you're very familiar with your covered call positions. We are paid a special dividend in the CME group and it was a big one. Here are the details on this position and the special dividend we received. 
Here you see the covered call position we own in the CME group. In the red rectangle, you see that we own 200 shares of CME. And in the blue rectangle, you see that we have sold covered call options against these shares. I know this slide has a lot going on, so let me talk you through it. Here you see a list of every trade we've done in the CME group over the past eight months or so. In the large red rectangle up top, you see all the put options that we sold in CME. Several times those put options went in the money and we had to roll them. But as you see at the bottom line of that large red box on November 20th, those 200 shares were put into our account. If you follow the black arrow over to the purple rectangle on the right, you see that by the time CME had been assigned to us, we had already collected just over $3,653 by selling put options. As soon as CME was assigned to us, as you see in the blue rectangle, we immediately sold the 30-day covered call option against it and pocketed $2.30 per share. CME proceeded to take off and we ended up buying the covered calls back on December 22nd for $7.39. If you follow the curved blue arrow down to the green rectangle, you see that we more than paid for the cost of buying that January 175 call option back by selling the March 180 strike call option for $8.60 per share. So we rolled that short covered call strike price up by $5. We're able to still pocket $1.21 per share. One of the reasons why I wanted to make sure that CME was not caught away from us was because as you see in the gold rectangle at the bottom on January 13th last month, we received a special dividend of $2.50 per share. That's why I want to share this position with you this month. CME had already paid its quarterly dividend, as you see at the top of that gold rectangle on December 30th of 85 cents per share. But they are known to pay a special dividend right around the beginning of the year. So we rolled that covered call option up and out so we could pocket the $500 that we received from the special dividend. The result, if you follow the red arrow, is that our call spaces in CME is now under 150 per share. I wanted to share this position with you, as well as the special dividend that we received, because it's a nice reminder that if you're selling covered calls in dividend paying stocks, make sure you're familiar with when and how much the quarterly dividends are, as well as any special dividends they typically pay. If we had not been paying attention to this position and familiar with the fact that CME typically pays a special dividend, we might have let CME be caught away from us in December and missed out on the easiest $500 we've ever made. If you'd like to see how we determine when is the best time to roll our short covered call options out, when this video is finished, check out the video in the link above and description below entitled, When Should You Roll Out a Covered Call Position? I'm about to share with you the details on the trade we did in our Disney Leap position last month. But if you're finding value in this video, please hit the like and thumbs up button. It helps me know that this is the kind of content you want me to continue producing for you. It's a small thing for you, but it goes a long way towards supporting this channel. The final trade and position I want to share with you is one of the most exciting positions we've been in over the past year. It's our leap option position, or as it's also known, our poor man's covered call in Disney. I'm excited to update you on this position and share with you how you can use leap options to put awesome cash flow into your pocket using leap options every month. Here you see our current leap and poor man's covered call position in Disney. In the blue rectangle, you see the January 2023 110 leap call option that we bought. Below that, you see the nearer term January of 2022 150 call option that we sold back in March of last year. And finally, at the bottom in the green rectangle, you see the near term call option that we sold against our long leap position. I know you're probably asking this in your head, are you naked one call option? And the answer to that question is yes. Here you see a list of every trade we've done since we entered this Disney Leap position. If you look at the very bottom in the lower right corner where the blue rectangle is, you see that we're in this position for free. In fact, we've actually been paid $852.20 to be in this position so far. Even though both of the call options that we have sold against our long Leap call option are in the money, last month we bought to close the deep in the money January 145 call option and rolled it out to the third Friday of February. I don't want to continue having one naked short call option Disney, so I'm looking for the opportunity to close out the short leap call that expires in January of next year in about 11 months. With my knowledge of gaps, I know that there's a 93% chance that Disney will try to come down to fill the gaps it's made around 160 and maybe even the one around 130. It tried to fill that gap a couple weeks ago, as you see where the white arrow is, but it didn't quite fill the gap. Now it's shot back up and is retesting its previous high around 183. If or when Disney does come back down and fill this gap, then I plan to buy to close the January 22 leap call option back 
and pay for it by selling to open a new put option Disney. The other possibility is that I can actually turn this into a butterfly, but that's probably a story for another video. If you'd like to see more details on how you can use leap options to generate awesome returns and put tremendous cash flow in your pocket every month, check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled Leap Option Trading Strategy. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.